What's up plant lovers, I'm Devin and today in this video I want to talk about how to get our tomato plants started from seed inside the home before it's time to start growing them outside. Now tomatoes typically they need to have nighttime temperatures in the 50s before they're actually ready to be outside for the duration of the summertime, but tomatoes take a long time to grow and then to produce fruit. So we really want to get as much of a head start as possible inside the home. So that typically means planting them inside the home about four to six weeks before that last frost. So the first thing that you need to determine is when is the best time to get your seedlings started. I use the farmer's almanac. You can just put in your zip code and that'll give you a date as to your last frost date in your region. Then you simply subtract about four to six weeks and that is your time that you want to start planting your seedlings inside the home. Now, while I'm going to be planting tomato seeds, this video is applicable to any warm season vegetable plants, uh, fruit plants like tomatoes, cucumbers, peppers, eggplants, things like that. All right. So now that we know when to plant, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to be using this awesome seedling mix. You can find a link to this in the description below if you want to use this as well. It's a great soilless medium, so it's very water retentive, but it's also porous. So it's going to be very beneficial for creating those little roots from our seedlings inside of our home. So I'm going to be using these little two and a half inch plastic containers, leftovers from some plants that I've purchased in the past. You could definitely use um, like a trays if you're planting a lot. I'm just going to be planting four, so four single individual pots is easy. You could use things like um, old uh, yogurt, little cups, anything like that would be perfect. Give them some drainage holes if you're using like a yogurt cup. So the first thing I like to do is I will take my seedling mix and I will try to guesstimate how much will fill those four containers, probably something like that. If you're going to be doing a lot of seedlings indoors, a tray like this is going to be really helpful, especially if you can find ones that have um, this covering like this. I'll try to find these online and put a link to these um, in the description as well, if that is more your route, if you're really going to be creating a lot of plants. Now that I have my seedling mix in here, I'm going to pre-moisten it. This is really important to do. Um, because you know, if you've planted anything from fresh bag soil before, you know it can be a little bit difficult to get it all nice and moistened. So I'm just using a fork, mixing it around until I have a nice consistency. So you can see it kind of looks like brownie batter and the way to test it, the moisture level, grab it, nice little handful, and you can see water's coming out. Not too much, not like just sopping out, but I have to squeeze it a little bit to get that moisture out. And that's gonna be a really nice, um, moisture level. Now I will fill up my little pots. And I like to leave about a half inch lip. Maybe a little bit more. Just like that. Okay, so depending on what you're planting will determine how deep you want to get yours planted. Um, I'm doing these black sea man tomatoes and it calls for um, depth of 1 16th to 1 quarter of an inch, okay? I'm just going to be putting one seedling and now I'll just use a little chopstick and make just a little small little hole just like that and get it planted. Once you get it planted in there, just gently cover it. Don't pat it down too much. So in the past, I've tried, you know, putting two seeds in each pot and these tomatoes are so nice. Um, all of my seeds germinated every time. So now I'm just doing one seed in each each container. Um, in fact, I only really want two plants because these the two plants will be definitely enough tomatoes for my wife and I, but I'm just doing a couple extras just in case. It's always good to do a few more than you might necessarily need. Now, this is also a good time to um, label and date what you're growing in each pot with today's current date so you know exactly when you did it. And once you get it labeled, if you're using this kind of tray, this is when you put your, your dome on top. But for us, in containers, I'm gonna be using some plastic wrap. And that's one of the reasons why we wanted to make sure to leave that little half inch lip from the soil to the top of the container so that we can have this dome action going on 
And when our tomatoes start, if we accidentally miss a day, the tomato's growth not, will not be impeded by the plastic. So just take your plastic wrap, put it on top, and I use just a little rubber band. Easy as that. So up till now, everything's been pretty self-explanatory. Now we really need to use a heat mat or a seedling heat mat. You can look in the description for a link to one of these mats. And this is my little propagation station. You can see I have other stuff going on here. Um, I always have lights attached somewhere. Now at this point with zero germination, i.e. there's no growth coming from our little containers, they don't really need light, but the light won't harm it. So if you do have a propagation station with lights on, um, that's fine. But what they do need is that heat. Now these heat mats um, that I'm using that you can find in the description, they do have sensors so they won't get overheated. What will, it will basically do is it will raise the soil temperature to around 75 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, but if it starts to get too hot, it will shut down so it's, you know, it's safe. And they're cheap, they're like 15 bucks. And you can see mine has been, been used a lot. So for now, this is our last step for the moment. Um, and once I start to see some growth coming out, I will uh, revisit and I will show you guys what to do next. All it's right. been a quick six days and my tomato seeds are already sprouting. So every day I've been just monitoring to see if I see any growth happening underneath the plastic. This morning I woke up and I could see two of them were pushing their sprouts up against the plastic. The other one was just starting to go. The fourth one is a little bit further behind. Um, and when I took the plastic off, the seedlings were a little bit bent, but as soon as I got them underneath the grow lights, they have straightened back up within like the, the last hour or so. So the important thing to note, once they start to sprout, we wanna get them closer to our grow lights, only about two inches or so. And I'm gonna keep mine on the heat pads. Heat pad is on 24 seven. So it's really important that we monitor the moisture level. We never want our seedlings to dry out. That can cause really a lot of undue stress and we do not want that for little babies. Now, if you look at the seeds, those first two sets of leaves, um, and they don't look like tomato leaves or cucumber leaves or pepper leaves, that's because those first two ones are always called um, cotyledons. They're like a fake leaf that the seedlings will quickly send out so that they can absorb some really fast uh, amount of light to provide them with some energy. And then the first set of true leaves will come here um, probably pretty quickly. So for now, we're just gonna monitor, monitor them, make sure they don't dry out, and um, once they start to create some true leaves, we will revisit and I'll show you guys what to do next. It's been 19 days since we planted our tomato seeds. You can see they have created, they're starting to create their first real sets of leaves. And as you can see, I had them really close to the lights, these goosenecks. And anytime that the lights get closer than like two inches, then I will just move the, the lights up a little bit. But we wanna keep those lights really nice and close. We are basically waiting until they get about six to eight inches tall before we move on to the next step. All right, so it's been six weeks since we planted our tomato seeds. We are nearing our last frost date. And um, the next thing that we need to do is to harden off our tomato plants before we actually plant them outside, whether that's in containers or the ground. So I have this little like thingy. And what I'm gonna do, um, so as you can see, only three, that one, the fourth one never did germinate. So I'm glad that I did a little bit of extras couple extra um, so that I would have my two plants and I guess now I have three. All right, so now we're ready for the period of hardening off our tomato plants prior to planting them out in our containers or right in the ground. This is a process that you need to give yourself around 10 to 14 days to, to fulfill. Now, I'm here in my covered front porch. Um, it is on the north side of my home. It doesn't receive any direct sunlight. The first day of hardening off, I'm simply going to place it outside right here for maybe two or three hours. The second, third, fourth days, I will slightly increase the amount of time out here on my front covered porch, uh, maybe to like five or six hours outside getting zero direct sunlight. After maybe six days, I will start to introduce it to a little bit more sunlight, maybe giving it morning direct sunlight, put it, I'll put it right on my front patio or right on my front path that does get some morning sunlight. And I will leave it out in that spot for six hours, maybe two of which it gets some pretty decent sunlight. By day 10, we can imagine we're leaving it outside from the morning until the nighttime, giving it maybe two to four hours of direct sunlight. 
Now you want to ensure that your plants are not experiencing any weather below like 45, 50 degrees. Anything below that will definitely start to stress out our plants and can stunt their growth. The other thing that I really recommend is keep them in their small containers until they have hardened off and you're ready to plant them in your containers or right in the ground. I find that if you start to transplant them to six or eight inch pots before their final destination, what will occur is that they will start to get tall, leggy, um, but there's really no benefit. In fact, these small guys will often um, end up superseding those ones that you had transplanted. So the best bet is to keep them in the small containers, but while we're hardening them off, giving them more sunlight, we do wanna ensure that they're not getting overly dried out or dehydrated because that's also going to stunt their growth as well. So this process of hardening off, it seems complicated, but it's really easy. Just gradually introduce it to more and more sunlight with the knowledge that these, by the end of maybe 10 to 14 days, these should be ready to spend the entire nights outside as well as the entire days in full sunlight. So that's what we're preparing them for. All right, so now that you've hardened your plants off, it's time to transplant them. Now, of course, I haven't actually hardened my plants off and they should not be transplanted, but I do wanna show you how to do it because there is one very important tip that you should definitely be um, utilizing when you're transplanting your tomatoes. Now, Tomatoes, unless you're growing some small sort of cherry variety, mostly they wanna be grown in large containers that are about 24 inches across for one plant. Seems like a lot, putting a small plant in such a big container, but it will absolutely grow quickly and fill out its roots in here by the time it's ready to start making fruit. So you do wanna err on, the, on a larger sized container. And when you're transplanting, using a really nice rich uh, potting mix is going to be essential. Now, like I said, my plants aren't ready to be transplanted yet, so I'm not gonna be transplanting this large guy. I'm gonna just show you guys what the quick tip is um, just by mocking up uh, a transplant into this smaller container, just for your reference, but never grow a tomato in a size pot like this. So once you have it popped out of the container, you know most of the time with most plants, we're going to transplant it so that the soil line is at that same level as it was. Tomatoes are different we're actually going to transplant it so that the new soil line is just below this lowermost set of leaves. So I'm going to get really deep into this container. And the reason why this is so important is because the tomato will actually produce roots out of that stem. And as it produces roots out of the stem, that's going to help it to anchor into the soil, providing it with some extra support. So it'll look something like this. Now, of course, at this point, you wanna give it lots of water, water it in well. Also, at this point, assuming you're in a you know, you'll be in a larger container or right in the ground, this is when you wanna give it that support structure, such as some stakes um, or some sort of uh, cage action. You can find in the description below a link to a really nice cage system that I use for all of my tomatoes. So now at this point, we're gonna put our tomato plants out in the full sun. We're gonna water them very regularly and we're also gonna fertilize them. I would say uh, once every seven to 10 days. I have a really nice uh, fertilizer um, that I will also put a link to in the description below if you need some fertilizer for your tomatoes and other vegetable plants. Well, I hope you found this video helpful giving you lots of tips and ideas on how to get your tomato plants started from seeds all the way to getting it planted outdoors so that you can enjoy nice, large, fresh, homemade tomatoes. There's really nothing like it. If you did enjoy this video, give it a like, subscribe to our channel. We're bringing new plant-related content every single week. Thanks for joining me here on Plant Vibrations. I'll catch you soon. Ciao.